Hello, I'm Cambria, your host of the Advocation Nation podcast, a podcast dedicated to highlighting different advocacy stories and journeys from many walks of life. Episodes come out weekly on Wednesdays, and you can go subscribe on YouTube or follow on Spotify or SoundCloud for updates on new episodes. Today, I am joined by Jeff Debray. Jeff is a nonprofit professional passionate about community engagement, affordable housing, and economic justice. His past experience includes working for Warren for President campaign and Spokane County United Way, with a focus on community organizing and partnership building between nonprofits and businesses to deliver results for youth experiencing homelessness, low-income families, students, and those seeking life-changing employment. He currently works at Win Win Action, a network of organizations coming together to advance racial, social, and economic equity across Washington through political engagement. I am honored to have him here on the show to talk more about his advocacy journey. Welcome, Jeff. Hello. Glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so just to start us off, can you tell us a little bit about your background, like your education, and then how you eventually got involved in the nonprofit and advocacy world? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up in Montana, a very small town of about 5,000 people, rural community. I attended Whitworth University in Spokane, Washington, and I graduated in 2018. A little bit more about my yeah, growing up experience, definitely had a lot of the classic Montana experiences of hunting, fishing, getting outdoors, as well as grew up in a like working class family, struggled with housing insecurity and um, financial difficulties. And for me, like college, like so many other young people was my uh, ticket out, so to speak, a ticket towards reaching your goals. And so, yeah, went to Whitworth, didn't ever think college would be a possibility for someone like myself, mostly because of cost, but was blessed and lucky enough to get scholarships and grants and a little bit of student loans. We can talk about that to, to attend Whitworth. And yeah, I, I got involved, I would say probably for two reasons in the advocacy space. One, coming to terms with and realizing my own lived experiences that I mentioned and how like those kind of experiences shouldn't be happening to any young person in our country. And believing that college should be affordable, accessible to young people, even if you can't afford it. And then two, I really started with in the organizing space at Whitworth with peers and friends in student government and specifically around protections for DACA recipients. So when I was in college, yeah, it was under the Trump administration and there were definitely risks to folks, students at Whitworth who were DACA recipients. And I have close friends who were. And yeah, that's when we first started organizing and pushing the administration, specifically the campus administration, to uh, explicitly protect students. And so, yeah, I guess that's probably my first, when people ask, what was your first organizing experience? I, I think about like marching to the president's office and writing petitions to protect, yeah, DACA folks. So yeah, that's, that's where I started. Yeah, that is so great. And I think it's really interesting hearing your perspective specifically as one of the goals of this podcast is to really reach out to younger folks who might be in college or high school or like kind of in that transition period. And so just hearing that you can start off, whether it be in your own institution that you're going to school and there's lots of ways that you can make change from there and then grow from the ground up. So could you give us an overview of what Women Action does and how advocacy plays a role in your current professional position? So you mentioned it a little bit, but Win-Win Action is a network of about 30 nonprofit organizations across Washington State that work primarily in political and civic engagement in underrepresented or hard to reach communities. So communities of color, young folks, LGBTQ communities, like folks that have traditionally not been as involved in politics and in civic engagement. And so my specific role, I am on the data team, which is a little bit of a different experience than I'd had before. I train a lot of the partners I mentioned on how to use digital tools and a voter file tool that we offer that provides research and modeling and data around voters in Washington state. An example of that would be training to run a phone bank, run a text bank, uh, do some research reports on 
who's missing or hasn't been reached out to in field and campaign work. Yeah, I guess for me, WinWin has a unique lens because we work with so many different organizations. We're in a spot where we know what other people are doing and who, like I said, who's not being reached out to, who is not being contacted, where money and resources are not being invested. And so I found myself in meetings with our, some of our partners and being able to say, hey, like, yeah, we're doing all this great work in, say, North Seattle, for example, or Shoreline, but Pierce County, Tacoma, they're not being reached out to as much. Or Spokane, less of a contact program out in Eastern Washington than Western Washington. Why is that? Part of it is a population reason. reason. Part of it is a lack of financial and political time and investment. So yeah, I think having that equity lens, the organization's really heavily focused on racial equity, and that's been a great learning experience for me as well. Yeah, and I feel like that work is so important, especially after this past election. I feel like a lot of people are asking themselves, like, how do I even register to vote? Or like, I know I had friends who are like, I've never voted before, but can you please tell me how to sign up? Like, I'm so confused. And so I think it's so good that you're doing that work that really helps reach those gaps that historically have not been filled in when people are campaigning or looking to voters. So I think that's so wonderful and important, especially as, you know, we're passionate about getting the younger generation voting and it's it's cool to see changes slowly but surely. And so this actually leads me to my next question. I am interested to hear a little bit more about your experience working on Warren's presidential campaign and some of your thoughts on grassroots organization and how that plays into advocacy. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, a little little more context for folks listening in. I was a Eastern Washington organizer for Elizabeth Warren's campaign for president out in Spokane with the plan being to organize folks with the upcoming primary. And so, man, my experience was wild. It was, I want to say like campaign life, you're overworked and you, I mean, I worked 60 hour weeks. Like I basically had no life for five months, but it was also so, so fun. Like it was really, really an incredible experience to be able to meet so many different people in Eastern Washington who cared about the same things that I did and that other people did in this election. And so what it was like for me is one, we had to build a field program and a program out of nothing because hiring campaign staff in Spokane for a presidential campaign is unheard of. But Warren had a different perspective. Again, having staff on the ground in harder to reach underrepresented communities, rural communities, because she believed And I won't get too much on my Warren pitch because I did that for a long time. But she believed deeply in economic justice and support for folks who had experienced poverty, who lacked access to childcare, couldn't afford to pay for childcare. And we know that that happens, especially in rural areas because they don't have access to education. They don't have access to a, a good hospital, even Internet. And that is true in spaces in Eastern Washington. It can be true in spaces in Spokane. And so, yeah, it was wonderful. I think we had these bold field goals for how many folks we wanted to have conversations with, endorsements we wanted to get from local community leaders. And I looked at the goals and I was like, there's no way. <laughs> like in the beginning, I was like, that, like I'm one person, we have a few volunteers, but like, there's no way. And I think walking away from that experience after she dropped out, I could look across the like Spokane County and see like, oh, I have this community leader in North Spokane. I have another community leader in Cheney out by Eastern Washington University, another one on the South Hill, all with different ex- life experiences. One was a teacher, one was a doctor, like single parents, like folks that just everyday people that cared a lot about this particular election. And so, yeah, I think you know, it was a national campaign, but it was definitely grassroots organizing because it was from the ground up. It was from the local community and there wasn't money behind it besides like one paid staff person. I mean, it was up to these volunteers to make it happen. And so, yeah, it was a great experience. That's so good to hear. And I think something that when people think of advocacy, I feel like oftentimes people think it's like, okay, I'm going to go meet with congressional representatives or this huge giant thing, but it's totally bottom up thing as well. You can't just make change from the top down. You have to really reach out into your community. And so I think just hearing your experience with grassroots organizing and working in your community to kind of empower people who had things to say and had a voice and maybe didn't have a channel and outlet for it before. I think that's so wonderful. And I think people could have a lot to learn from that. Just if they're looking to get more involved in their community, there are ways to do that without necessarily 
meeting with your elected representatives, but just talking to your neighbors and people in your community? Yeah, that's that's a great reflection. I <laughs> It made me think of a couple of the volunteers I worked with who a huge part of my ask of them would be to take leadership on launching, training other volunteers to knock on doors in support of a particular candidate or make calls and asking them to do that at the beginning of that race. No way. They would have been so scared. Like, I don't want to talk to strangers. What if I say the wrong thing? And the truth is like, it doesn't really matter if you're a policy expert. It actually doesn't matter at all. Where you have the most impact is when you can be someone who lives two blocks away from a neighbor in Spokane and you're knocking doors in your neighborhood and you say, hey, like, what issues do you care about here? I think youth homelessness and homelessness in schools, especially, is a huge issue in Spokane. And the Warren campaign had practical plans around addressing affordable housing and youth homelessness and support for young people. And so you just walk up to the door and like, hey, what do you care about in Spokane? Oh, I care about that too, because my kid or my kid's friend has experienced homelessness. And then you're having a conversation. It's not like you're walking in and saying, here's all these wonderful plans that Warren has. You're not a, like a salesman. You're just getting to know your community and getting to know your neighbors. And that's really how change happens. So it's just, you're so right. People are, are scared of it and I get it at first, but it's, you don't have to be an expert. I'm not an expert. You're not an expert. We're just trying our best. So. <laughs> And I think what you said about not having to be an expert is just really resonates with this whole idea of anyone can be an advocate. And I feel like a lot of times people don't want to get political per se or like have a political opinion because they feel like they're maybe not qualified to talk about politics. But when you realize that politics isn't just what you see in the news, but it's really the things that are happening around you every day and things that you can do to affect affect change in your life, your loved one's life, your community's life. I think that's really where the heart of advocacy is, is realizing it's not just kind of this closed door meeting. It's really where people can truly come together. And the, regardless of their background, education level, there's no requirement to be an advocate. And so I think you put that really well. So this actually leads into my next question about what are some of the lessons you've taken away from working in advocacy and what kind of doors has it opened for you? And I guess more importantly, I guess this is a three in one question, but what does advocacy mean to you overall? Yeah, I, I was reading over this question um, beforehand that you sent and I I got really fired up because I was just like thinking about how much I learned and, and how much opportunity there is to learn. But I, one, and speaking specifically to the young people that might be listening or will listen to this is like, you are way more powerful than you even know. And society and being young, lacking that confidence, you're told constantly, you got to wait till you're older to make a difference, till you own a house, do you have money, like whatever it is, do you have work experience, like you're not ready, not now, not yet. But when I look back at my life so far, I never regret, like, I'm never like, oh, I said too much. I pushed too hard. I'm always like, no, I should have pushed harder. Like, I wish I had more confidence in myself then and said more. Um, and so like, Part of the reason how the status quo stays the same is just we're told we can't make a difference. Um, and so that's the first thing, like you're way more powerful than you know, as a young person being involved. The other thing is you're probably going to lose like whatever thing you're advocating for healthcare, your mom, like being able to stay in the hospital longer after she has a kid, like whatever it is, it's going to be hard. And you're probably going to lose a lot of things you're fighting for, but it's not about like one single win. I think that's the other thing. It's it's a long game. Advocacy is always a long game. I mean, losing sucks. We lost when I worked on the campaign. I've seen things not happen as fast as I want them to in Spokane, especially around support for, for young folks. And so, yeah, just don't quit and don't think that like just because you lost this one thing that it's not doable. I guess the last thing, I mean, I've, I can think of a whole bunch of stuff, but the last thing I comes to mind is with advocacy, it's all about relationships. It's all about who you build relationships with. And honestly, that's also the best part about it. Some of my <laughs> close friends now are people I worked with who were volunteers in the Warren campaign or former coworkers at United Way. Like, it's just about who you know, because so many people know more than you do at the same time as a young person. The last thing I'll say is choose your battles wisely. Not every opportunity is your responsibility. Some people are not gonna hear you. But the battles you do, do choose, like give them everything. What it means to me too is being able to 
learn from other people that are friends who are people of color, friends who are queer, friends who are like whatever it is, learn from them and learn how to best support them in a way that's not taking up space that they haven't had, but in a way that doesn't require them to always stand up for themselves because that's what every day of their life are there, whatever it is, life can be like. So yeah, just always have a posture of learning and when you're comfortable, like for me, I found my power in being able to advocate when I could speak to my lived experience about growing up experiencing poverty. That's when you really change hearts and minds as people can hear a policy or hear a statistic But if they meet Jeff and Jeff says, this happened to me, oh, I care about Jeff or I care about Cambria and this happened to Cambria or this is happening to Cambria's family, it's a lot harder for them to walk away. And it's a lot easier to care and be involved. And like you were saying, it's local and it's your your neighbors and your friends. Yeah, I think that's great. Hearing you reflect on your experience, it makes me reflect a bit on mine and realize that when I first got started, I did not know anything. I still do not know a lot of things and I'm still learning in many ways. Sometimes it's like good learning and then I'll like sit down and read a book. And other times it's my friends being like, hey, you said something wrong. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, I appreciate that. And I think taking that posture of humility and learning is so important, especially because advocacy doesn't necessarily mean using your voice, but being more of a listener and then understanding how to use your voice in a way that also works along others in communities that you're trying to help. It's not putting yourself in the center. Yes, I really appreciate how you've reflected on that. And so I guess what piece of tangible advice would you give to younger folks looking to get more involved in their community, whether it's ways that they could get involved with a campaign or ways that they could get involved in community initiatives or policy efforts. Do you have any good practical advice for that? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. For me, I would take a second to think about what I'm passionate about, things I want to see change, make a list. Then I would look around like where I'm living in Spokane and see how I see those passions being lived out by people I know. And then I would reach out to folks who I know are already experts in that particular field or already working in that field. And you've probably heard this before, but in the nonprofit world, like they always want help. Like no one's ever going to be like, no, we don't need you. What they don't want is other people stepping in and starting their own nonprofit and doing their own thing and working in silos. There's probably already good work happening around a particular issue or thing that you're, you're passionate about. So just start asking. A couple things that come to mind, if you have a, I know neighborhood associations are a thing, and I think they're a thing in most cities, but there's like monthly neighborhood meetings that happen where they talk about local issues. City council meetings are a great way to be involved. I few months ago, there was a housing, affordable housing levy with the Spokane City Council and was able, I was able to, along with some friends, speak to the council on that. Again, it was super, it was like super easy. Like there was no bar enter. Hey, you want to talk? Here's like three minutes. Say what you need to say. And so many people spoke. So yeah, and just start volunteering. Don't walk in and say, this is, these are the things that we need to change right now, but just start volunteering at a homeless shelter or at if your church is doing partnership with a food bank or whatever it is, and that's how you really meet people. And that's how you get the lived experience that's important to be a better advocate. That's great advice. And I think the focal point that I've heard you saying is just really the emphasis on learning and putting yourself in spaces where you can learn more from people around you. It's kind of like we're these sponges and we're always ready to absorb this information from whether it be working on an internship or as a volunteer somewhere, but there are so many people already doing work and that have been fighting the good fight for whatever cause it may be. And it's so important to just kind of sit back and soak that in, in a lot of ways. I think definitely the first step of advocacy is education and then going from there. So that's really great advice. Thanks. Yeah. And I've seen you do some great advocacy as well with your experience with your brother uh, being sick and starting this podcast. It's just so cool to see people even just a couple of years younger than me finding their own groove and finding their own thing. So excited to see what's next. Yeah, thank you. And I appreciate that. And actually, I think it kind of goes with our conversation, but from my personal experience and hearing a little bit about your advocacy experience, something that resonates with me is the fact that 
I didn't know advocacy was a thing until I learned that I could like stand up for healthcare and talk about my brother's story. And I think earlier you were talking about how important it is to just kind of lean into your story and be able yeah. to use that because that's when people listen. And so I think that just opened immense doors for me. And that's actually what kind of got me going down this pathway of not knowing anything about politics or advocacy, but then being like, oh my gosh, I can talk to people in my community or local government or representatives in DC and they <laughs> listen sometimes. And I think you're also right when you say that you don't win every single battle. I've had some advocacy meetings with representatives who are just like, why are you here? But you know, like looking at their watch and kind of ready for you to leave. But yeah. it truly really is about building those relationships and connections because eventually there is one small change in one area or you kind of see someone budge in another way. And that's where the opportunities really open up. So I just mm -hmm. appreciate your advice about being persistent and kind of figuring out what you're passionate for before you dive headfirst into it. And you don't need to dive headfirst into it. You can just start in small ways. So, yeah. 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 I love that focus that you said again on story and I'll say, do it when you're ready to, you're being vulnerable too. Like you're opening up about something that was hard for you, hard or painful for you. So a lot of times when I'm thinking about being a good ally, I'm always like, oh man, I shared my story. Other people need to share their stories too. Like that's how we're going to really change things. Make someone cry like in a good way, you know, but that's a lot to put on the person with the experience too. And so it's the fastest way to create change, but just do it when you're ready. Yeah. I think that's a really good piece of advice. What you were saying earlier in our conversation about really realizing that people with lived experiences who are advocating for themselves are doing so much work to educate others on things that they have to live through every single day. And so Google is one click away. There's lots of ways that we can educate ourselves yeah. and kind of take that burden off in a lot of ways, but also just truly listening and being there for folks who are going through lived experiences that we're trying to advocate for. So I think that's a really good piece of advice, knowing where your place is and where to breathe and how you can help other people just take a break and breathe and relax for a bit too. I think that's really important, just mental health wise, which is a whole other conversation we could get into. Yeah. Self-care, <laughs> self-care is an active revolution. And so it's critical. Like, so yeah, that's another thing we can, yeah. But. Yes. I know I could honestly have a whole other podcast cool. just about how to take care of yourself or <laughs> politics or advocacy. <laughs> yeah, we're, I think about that a lot when I worked on a campaign. I'm like, it was great, but in some ways, yeah, you got to take care of yourself. So Yes. Well, yeah. Jeff, thank you so much for being here. It's been such a pleasure talking with you and hearing more about your experiences. And I really hope that people have some stuff to take away and maybe even go get involved with the local campaign or, you know, go talk to your neighbors, do something. Yeah. 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 I hope so too. Uh, thanks for reaching out. This was, this is great. Awesome. Thank you.